This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Father, we thank you tonight. I want you to give him praise for today being day 39 of the renewing of the mind. Day 39 of renewing our minds with God's Word. Let's thank him. When we started this meeting, there were a lot of expectation, and I have miracles myself. I have testimonies myself of how God has come through for me as a person. I want us to thank him tonight. I want us to give him praise. It pays to serve God. The best thing you can do with your life is to use it for Jesus. Believe me, you will never regret being committed you will never regret serving God. There is so much to benefit. There is so much to receive. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you that your word will go forth and produce supernatural results. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You can quickly say, hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is 40 days of renewing your mind with God's word. What is it? It's a 40 days of doing what? Of renewing your mind with God's word. 40 days of glory and power. And one of the ways that God moves you forward is by giving you his word. Whenever God wants to move a person forward, he brings forth his word. And his word contains direction. His word contains hope. His word contains inspiration. And his word contains the foundation for true success. Whenever God wants to move you forward, he gives you his word. Hallelujah. We're in a season of seven manifestation. Remember yesterday I started talking about the manifestation of power that as a New Testament believer you are expected to live a life of power and that life of power will introduce the lifestyle of dominion hallelujah the power of God being activated will introduce the lifestyle of dominion the lifestyle that is consistent with God's ways of doing things. And dominion is the will of God for us. And one of the areas where God wants us to walk in dominion is in the area of prosperity. So tonight we'll be looking at riches. Seven seasons of manifestation. Hallelujah. Manifestations of the seven seasons. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I believe that God will be putting his word in you as you make progress in the things of the spirit. Prosperity is the will of God. Prosperity is the will of God. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. And prosperity begins with the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. The finished work of Jesus laid a foundation for the prosperity of the believer. I said the finished work of Jesus laid the foundation for the prosperity of the believer. God's intention is for you to prosper according to his word and according to his purpose. 
I said, God's intention is for you to prosper according to his will and according to his purpose. Prosperity is God's will. And prosperity can be financial. There is financial prosperity. One of the ways that the saints will dominate in these last days is to prosper financially to advance God's purpose in every region they have found themselves. I said one of the ways that the saints of God, believers in the body of Christ, will establish influence is to prosper financially as they can have dominion in every region. And financial prosperity is one of the greatest threats of Satan. One of the greatest threats of Satan is the believer prospering financially. One of the greatest challenge of Satan is to see you prosper financially because when you prosper financially, it is easy for you to give for the work of God. It is easy for you to establish the will of God in different areas of life. So financial prosperity is God's will. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, which is our key test for season of seven manifestation. The title of this message is Seven Manifestation Part 2. Yesterday we we'll talked about riches. We we'll talked about power, sorry. Yesterday we we'll talked about power and today we are talking about riches. Riches. God wants you to be rich. Religion will tell you God doesn't want you to be rich. But God wants you to be rich. To be rich in wisdom. To be rich in finances. To be rich in knowledge. To be rich in understanding. To be rich in purpose. God wants you to be rich. And the lamb was slain. Let's look at Revelation 5 verse 12. I'd like to read this scripture. Saying with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom. When the lamb was slain, he received power. The next thing we saw is riches. And can I say this to you? Riches is the will of God. It is impossible for you to advance God's purpose in poverty. It is impossible for you to advance God's purpose in lack. It is impossible for you to advance God's purpose in insufficiency. You can't advance the purpose of God in a state of insufficiency. And that was why we have John 10 verse 10. The B part of it said, I've come that you have life and have it more abundantly. The will of God is for you to operate from a place called overflow. Overflow is the will of God. Increase is the will of God. But for there to be manifestation of riches, that Jesus has made available through his death, through his resurrection, there is a need for you to connect with the person of the Holy Spirit in conversation, in wisdom, and in understanding. If I'm going to manifest riches according to God's word, I need to have a word foundation. A foundation of the word of God is important in the manifestation of true riches. 
It is not every prosperity that endures the will of God. Real prosperity finds their root in the integrity of the word. I said real prosperity finds their root in the integrity of God's word. Real prosperity finds their root in the integrity of the word. So God wants you to have riches. But God doesn't want riches to have you. God wants you to have riches, abundance, but he doesn't want it to control you. He wants you to control it. God has purpose for riches. I want to say that again. I say God has purpose for riches. There is a reason why he wants you to be rich. One of the ways God empowers his people is to prosper them financially. Financial empowerment is one of the greatest empowerments. When a person is empowered financially and they listen to the leadership of the Spirit, they will enforce the will of God and they will advance the will of God. Prosperity is a tool for advancing God's purpose. I want to say this again. I said prosperity is a tool for advancing God's purpose. One of the ways you advance the purpose of God is true prosperity. It said, true prosperity will my seat is spread. One of the ways the purposes of God will get to people is when there is a financial prosperity. And let me say this to you. Financial prosperity is strategic in manifesting kingdom purpose. I want to say that again. I said financial prosperity is strategic in manifesting kingdom purpose. For you to manifest God's agenda, God's purpose, there is a need for financial prosperity. But one of the things I want to look at this evening is also we having the mentality that can host financial prosperity. Having the mentality that can host financial prosperity. There are people who by their attitude reject prosperity. There are people by their way of life don't agree with prosperity. There are even Christians that say things like I don't, they don't preach prosperity message. I've heard preachers say they don't preach prosperity message. No. We we'll preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It has the ability to prosper you. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ contains the ability to prosper a person. The gospel prospers. The gospel empowers. So when people make emphasis of, I don't believe in prosperity message. I don't believe in prosperity. So how do you preach the gospel? And most of those people are in television. And they are asking people to give. Why are you asking them to give? If you don't believe in prosperity, don't take offerings. Don't take tithes. Hallelujah. If somebody here, I don't know what I'm saying right now. Because giving leads to prosperity. One of the key things that opens the door of supernatural prosperity is giving. According to Jesus, it said, give and it shall be given to you according to Jesus. Not according to Harvard School. Not according to anybody. According to Jesus, he said, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed and shaken together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. That is what Jesus said. That when you start giving, men will give unto you. I didn't say Paul said that. Paul also went forward to say, uh, I was reading from a particular translation. Was it message? It said, He that gives stingy, you know. A stingy giving will get a stingy harvest. And a lavish giving will get a lavish harvest. Somebody who gives lavishly will reap lavishly. You get what I'm saying right now? Somebody who is stingy in their giving. There are Christians who are very stingy. Very, very stingy, folks. Huh? Very stingy. Oh, my God. If you pastor them, you go broke. <laughs> if you pastor them, they can't do nothing. They can't have money. You know, a dear friend was sharing with me. I was so surprised. 
that he went to, he followed these members of his church to a particular place they want to buy a property. And the people are saying uh, the property is going for, is it 150 million? 150 million. So they were pricing like 90 to 100 million. And in the church where they passed, where this my friend passed, though, this my friend is in need of, is it 10 million naira to get, or 5 million or 10 million to get a place for the church? These people behave as if they never heard what they were saying. <laughs> So when he was with them and they were pricing up to 90 million to 100 million. So when the man went out to talk to the owner, he was talking to his wife. You could have that kind of money. He said, yes. If the man agree, we can even pay 110 and we can. And then it dawned on him. It's not just pastoring the rich. It's pastoring the rich that gives. Some people can have money, but they can't give it. Giving is a different thing. Giving comes from revelation. I said giving comes from revelation. You need to have a revelation to be a giver. So God wants us to prosper, but the purpose of the prosperity is to advance his purpose. God is not empowering you for selfish interest. He's empowering you for his kingdom. He's empowering you to do purpose. So prosperity is the will of God. So we need to have a word foundation. This is why you have Joshua 1 verse 8. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God was talking to Joshua. He said, this book of the Lord should not depart from your mouth. That you should meditate on it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written during that you'll be able to do. God wants Joshua to pray that you may prosper. That you, you will make your way prosperous. So God's intention from the beginning was to see his children prosper. But for me to prosper, I need to renew my mind to believe that prosperity is the will of God. Because religious people will talk you out of it. They will tell you it's not about prosperity. Let me say this to you. Where there is no prosperity, there will be a rise and increase in crime. I can tell you that. Oh, lack is the father of crime. I said what? Lack. Poverty is what? Is the father of crime. Most crime in the society, 87% to 90% of crime is financially related crime, including in relationships. A woman can be married and be sleeping with a man who gives her money. A man can be married and be sleeping with another woman who gives her money. A young girl can keep a man in his life who gives her money. Why? Because that situation is a financially related situation. Somebody can be in a church and not believe in that church and say, I want to go to another place where they can pay me more. You get what I'm saying right now? It's financially related decision. Most decisions that people make, 98% of most decisions is a financially related decision. Somebody's in a place where God called him or her to serve, and they got offended looking for a place where they can find greener pasture. It's a financially related issue. That is the effect of poverty. That is how poverty operates. Somebody can be in a place where he has good relationship, but he never considered those relationships. They considered money above the relationship. That's what happened. When you see people there in a place of five years, you had a good relationship with them, you relate like a family, and they decided to move, not because you offended them, but because of the money. Because to them, money is important than relationship. But wise people protect relationship above money. Because most of the things you're looking for will happen in relationship. So I gave somebody an offering of a watch, and I told him the reason why I'm giving you this watch, you are a very faithful fellow. And that watch is very expensive, very, very expensive. So I'm giving it to you as a gift. I'm giving it to you, you as a gift. I'm giving you because you are a very faithful fellow. There are people you can't give treasure things. Things that treasure, you can't give it to them. You give treasure things to sons. When I say sons, women are included here. Treasure things to people that you know that their heart is towards God, their heart is towards kingdom, their heart is towards purpose. 
a man who exalts money than God, than relationship, is the man that will never go far with God. I want to say that again. I said, a man who exalts money than God, than relationship he has with people, will never go far with God, will never go far with life. Why? Because money cannot be trusted. You don't trust in money. You trust in God. That is why the U.S. dollar on its inscribed, they said, in God we trust. Why are they saying in God we trust? Because you don't trust money. Money cannot be trusted. That is why those who used to know that used to have money many years ago, now they don't have the money anymore. Why? Because money cannot be trusted. And money is not stable. The character of money keeps changing. Inflation can change what you have. But can I say this to you? When God is your source, money becomes your servant. I want to say that again. I said when God is your source, money becomes your servant. When God is your source, money becomes your servant. You get to a point where money becomes your servant because God is your source. You, you don't pursue money at the expense of your relationship with Jesus. You don't pursue money. You don't go after money in a such a way that you don't care about your work with God. You don't care about your relationship with God. You don't care about your relationship with your family. No, we are not in pursuit of money when pursuit of purpose and money will follow. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. One of the things that can follow you is financial favor when you choose to do things God's way. One of the things that can follow you. So if you're going to walk in true riches, if you're going to walk in abundance of financial resources, number one, you need to lay a foundation of God's word. The foundation of God's word will give you the steps, will give you the insight that is consistent with God's way of financial manifestation. It will give you the insight how God wants you to have the money. Because if God is not leading you, you'll be toiling with our results. And there are many people toiling, I can tell you. They are really working hard. But their hard work is not paying off. It's good to work hard, but to be led by the Spirit is key to increase. I said it is good to work hard, but to be led by the Spirit of God is what? Is the key to increase. The Spirit knows where the prophet is. I said what? The Spirit knows where the prophet is. The Spirit knows where the prophet is. It's not by might, it's not by power. And this is why you need to lay a word foundation. Why should I lay a word foundation? Word foundation determines the right expectation. When you have a word foundation, the foundation of God's word, it determines the right expectation. If I lay a foundation of the word, I, I want to make money God's way. I don't want to steal. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to manipulate somebody, swindle, or take advantage of somebody. No, I don't want to do that. Because if you have the foundation of the word, you will expect favor in every transaction. You will expect favor in every business deal that is in line with God's word. You must do businesses that are in line with the law of the land. Business that is in line with God's word. You can't be a Christian and you're going to do drugs. And you know the law of the land is against it. You say, I need prosperity. No, that's not prosperity. The law of the land does not allow it. The law of the land does not allow you to vandalize pipe. Yes, our politicians may be misbehaving, a lot of them, because most times people vandalize pipes by, because of the offended. Let me bring the balance to the issue. They believe that most people at the leadership of our nation don't think about those they are leading. So the people they are leading, most of them begin to think about vandalization. And most of the vandalization is connected to offense. People are offended. And when people are offended, they compromise principles. When people are offended, they don't want to listen to the law of the land. As believers, we shouldn't go that direction. As believers, when people are offended, stealing is connected to offense. So when people look at their life like they're not making progress, they look at this other person is making progress. The fact to collect what she has will make them happy. A young man one day stole a phone, was running, was running when he stole the phone, was running. 
at night and run into a coming vehicle. And that was how the vehicle hit him and he died. The person who owned the phone was chasing him, came and collected his phone. Well, he lost his life. When people are offended, the tendency of manifesting corruption is there. Most corruption is connected to offense. Most of the corruption practices that we see today is related with offense. And that is why the Bible said, faith walketh by love. Because when you walk in love, you want to do the will of God. Faith walketh by love. When you walk by love, you want to do the will of God. So if you're going to manifest riches, you need to have a word from nation. That's the first thing. Renewing your mind with God's word will open the door for the flow of the spirit and the leadership of the spirit. Renewing your mind with God's word will open the door for the flow of the spirit and the leadership of the spirit. Renewing your mind with God's word will lead to the flow of the spirit and the leadership of the spirit. Renewing your mind with God's word will lead to the flow of the spirit and the leadership of the spirit. If my mind is not renewed with God's word, it will be difficult for me to connect with the flow of the spirit that will lead to the supernatural increase I'm looking for. So all renewed mind cannot unlock riches. Your mind has to be renewed. Your mind has to be renewed in the knowledge of the finished work of Jesus concerning walking in true riches. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. Prosperity is the will of God. Prosperity is the will of God. And financial prosperity is a proof of walking in dominion. Financial prosperity is one of the proof of walking in dominion. One of the ways we walk in dominion is when we prosper financially. One of the ways we walk in dominion and financial prosperity, like I told you, begins with having the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. God wants me to prosper. Third John verse 2. In third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I wish above things that I wish above all things that you prosper. Now the prosperity of the soul, which the soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotion. I said the soul is made up of what? The mind, the will, and the emotion. And God wants your mind to be renewed as you can host prosperity. I've seen people who don't believe that prosperity is the will of God. Leave all these prosperities in a bit. This thing is not working. It's working. The word of God works. The, the, the area where you believe the word is the man, they will determine the manifestation you will see. If you only take healing, you will have healing when you have a health issue. Huh? If you believe that prosperity is the will of God, you will prosper. But the mentality has to be there for, for the experience to become a reality. The mentality of prosperity has to be there. I need to have this mentality that God wants me to prosper. God wants me to prosper. It is the will of God for me to prosper. God wants me to prosper. God wants me to prosper. And there is something God's word has said about prospering. I need to know what God's word has said. So the first foundation is to have the foundation of the word. The foundation of the word positions you to expect from God. I said the foundation of the word of God expects you to expect from God. You, the next thing is the revelation of God is your source. If you're going to walk in riches, you need to have this revelation that God is your source. God is my source. There are many channels, but God remains the source. God is my source. Psalm 23 verse 1, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I must have this mentality that God is my source. My job is not my source. My wife is not my source. My husband is not my source. My children are not my source. My friends are not my source. My partners are not my source. You must come to that knowledge that God is your source. And every other person I've mentioned remains channel. 
Every other person, your wife is your channel. Your husband can be a channel. Your children can be a channel. Your sister can be a channel. Your mother can be a channel. But the true source is God. So this revelation of God being your source empowers you to have what is called right expectation. When you have this revelation that God is my source. So when you're going out for business, you don't see the business as your source. You see the business as your channel. And then you see God as your source. And then God will pour resources on that channel for your business. God is going to pour increase on that business. Because you're not seeing the business as your source. You're seeing God as your source. And when God is your source, there is how you approach situations. When God is your source, there is how you look at life. There is how you look at your purpose. When God is your source, God is my source. This revelation that God is your source will equip you to flourish and to prosper. God is my source. God is my source. When God is your source, you will trust him. The act of trusting God is connected to this revelation that God is my source. I said the act of trusting God is connected to this revelation that God is my source. The act of trusting God is connected to this revelation that God is my source. Who is your source? God should be your source. Your source in thinking. Your source in vision. God is my source. When God is your source, you look at things differently. You never said, I am finished. There are people who used to use word that, I am finished. My own don't finish. Jay, my life don't end. My own don't finish. No hope. You can't say that. When God is your source, God does not finish. He said, I said before you an open door and no man can shut it. Losing your job doesn't mean losing God. Losing a business deal doesn't mean losing God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? And when God is your source, you will look at things differently. You will serve differently. Your commitment to the things of the spirit will move in a different direction. That is consistent to the will of God. Why? Because you saw God as a source. God is my source. The psalmist said, I look unto the hills from whence come at my help. My help comes from God. My help comes from God. God is my source. God is my source. You must say that to yourself. You must believe that God is my source. God is my source. He's making a way for me. He's opening the door for me. Nobody can look at you and tell you, without me, you cannot make it. Without me, no, nobody. Jesus said, uh, without the Father, I, I can do nothing. Without him, I can't do nothing. I can't do anything. I can't do anything without God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? But human beings are channels that God uses in helping us. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? But human being is not the source. They are the resources. Human being is the resources. Somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? But the resource is God. You must have this revelation that God is my source. And if you don't have this revelation that God is your source, you will always compromise biblical value to solve your problem. When God is not your source, you always compromise. I better leave that church something. I beg. I will do whatever I want to do. I beg. I better leave that church. I will do whatever I want to do. Because God is not your source. But once God is your source, it will show your body language. It will show your confession. It will show your attitude. It will show the way you look at things. God is my source. He's going to make a way for me. The raven brought the bread for Elijah. That same God is my God. The raven brought a, li a bread for Elijah. The raven was coming to minister to the prophet. The God who turned water into wine is my source. The God that fed more than 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. That God is my God. It's my source. And let me say this to you. The revelation that God is your source is what brings financial stability, emotional stability, and spiritual stability. You know why I said that? When you see God as your source, you don't panic. I said when you see God as your source, you don't do what? You don't panic. When you see God as your source, you can trust him for supernatural ideas. God is my source. God is going to help me. God is going to make a way for me. God is going to help me. God is my source. I'm not just preaching uh, theory to you. I'm preaching the life I live as a person. God is my source. I trust God. God will come true. We'll, we'll live by faith, we'll walk by faith, and not by sight. God is able to make all grace abound towards us that we are always having. So if you're going to walk in true riches, if you're going to have 
manifestation of victories, what foundation? The revelation of God is your source. The third thing, believe God for supernatural insights, ideas, and concepts. That's the third thing we're going to look at. Believe God for supernatural ideas, insights, and concepts that will lead to wealth creation. Believe God for supernatural ideas, insights, and concepts that will lead to wealth creation. Believe God for supernatural ideas. Ephesians 1 from verse 17 to 18. And one of the things Paul began to talk about there, I said that God grants you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Somebody needs to believe God for supernatural idea. Idea that will lead to product and service. Because when you talk about manifestation of riches, you need to discover the work of your hands. There must be something in your hands that God will use to bring to increase your way. There has to be either a job, a business, service you provide, there has to be an idea. There has to be an idea you are in pursuit of. There has to be a concept. There has to be an insight. insight. And also the, there has to be a vision. What is your financial vision? What vision do you have? Your vision determines your expectation. Your vision determines your expectation. Your vision determines your preparation. And your vision defines your association. Expectation. Your vision determines your expectation. Your vision determines your preparation. And your vision defines your association. Expectation. Expectation. Your vision will define your expectation. It defines your association. Hallelujah. So it is important that you have an idea and let me say this, you can start believing God for ideas. Lord, show me what to do. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14, as men that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Lord, I believe I receive ideas of what to do. I believe I receive ideas. God can tell you to go and learn how to make clothes. And from making clothes, he can make you a billionaire. You can have your clothes line, you can have your brand. What I'm wearing right now is somebody's clothes line. It's a brand I am wearing this evening. It's somebody's brand that I'm wearing this evening. Hallelujah. So God may give you a vision to start a clothes line. God may give you a vision to go into manufacturing of soap, making of soap. And let me say this. God can even give you a vision of going to bakery. Into a bakery, into a baking business ideas lay the foundation for wealth creation. Ideas lay the foundation for wealth creation. One of the things that lays the foundation for wealth creation is ideas. What ideas do you have, brother? What ideas do you have, sister? If you don't have ideas, begin to pray in the spirit with expectation. Pray in the spirit with expectation. I receive ideas. I receive business ideas. Likambrado shakamba. It may be to start selling fairly used clothes. And you start thinking creative way to package those clothes and present them to people as they could buy it. Ideas. What are the ideas? You need to believe God for supernatural ideas. You need to believe God for ideas that create money, that create wealth. Ideas. You need to begin to pray about it. Pray about it. You're praying the spirit. You kept your diary and your pencil or your pen or you kept your notepad, whatever you use in taking notes and you're praying about ideas. I receive supernatural idea of what to do. I receive supernatural ideas of what to do. I receive supernatural ideas in the name of Jesus. Sometimes what you're looking for is already available. Idea will unlock it. I said, sometimes what you're looking for is available, but ideas can unlock it. One idea can change your whole life. 
You need to believe God for ideas. Every one of you here have potential. But the fuel of potential is ideas. Idea provide leadership for potential. Ideas will provide leadership for your potential. You can be gifted, but packaging makes the difference. You can be gifted. You can be a very gifted person. But what is the idea you're bringing to the market? There is a market with your name on it. There is a market with your name on it. I'm believing God for an idea. I'm trusting God. And let me say this to you. If you don't have an idea, it should be difficult for there to be manifestation of wealth creation. Except you have a wealth transfer by the help of the Spirit. But even in wealth transfer, you need what is called multiplication of wealth. And then that's why I need idea. Business idea. You can start a bakery if God is leading you there. You can learn how to bake and have one of the best bread in town. There's a particular bread we used to eat and uh, I've always endorsed that bread for my family members. And one day, we didn't see that bread. So they, they showed us another bread to buy. So if we buy this, Pastor, you'll like it. So we bought the one they told us we would like and we ate it we we'll sack the other bread. Okay, let, let me tell you what happens sometimes. That's why you have to to be relevant is continuous. To have influence is continuous. I'm a pastor. I read extensively. I study. My library can buy all our car. My library. My books then. Oh, when I was coming up in ministry in life, I know they wear shoes. I know they, 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 they clothes be the problem. Now books are they buy. Now books are they buy. Books and tapes. Information. I was, no, I was, information is a currency. Information is a currency. One of the greatest currencies called information. I was buying books. I was buying them. I was reading them. I wanted to know something. There are a lot of people that want to experience greatness but with low information. They don't have the information structure to create the quality of life they are looking for. First degree, no means I read something. You go, I get first degree. First degree, a different level of for life. You need more than first degree. You need to read extensively. You need to read. Buy books, sit down, and read them. Developing your capacity, your mental capital. There is a mental capital. There is a mental capital. Developing your capacity. You can be gifted, but you need skill to make the gifts to shine. You can be gifted, but you need skill to make the gifts you have to shine. If your gift is going to shine, there is a required skill. I cannot preach anywhere and they don't invite me back. No place. I can't stand on any altar, anywhere, even in a business meeting, conferences, whether they are church people or they are not church. Wherever I stand, I stand out because I choose to live like that. Wherever I stand, I stand out. If you keep me in the midst of business professors, with me with them for the next 30 minutes, they will agree with you that that guy has something. I continue to enlarge my capacity. If reading is not a culture, it means you have expired. If reading is not your culture, I get too tired, I am very busy, I can't read. Then you have not started. You can't read and you want to build a great life. How? No magic. You must know something. You must know something that your teachers don't know. Knowledge is a currency. How can you be wearing Versace, wearing designers, and you don't get library for your house. You don't get books. 
So when I know if I come on, I say, ah, now I'll come visit you. I say, take me to where you keep your books. Some people don't have up to two books. The books they have is the one they, in university, uh, 101 economics and 202 and those two words, whatever they call them. Real life jam you. Makuta. You can also your 202 and 203, they are playing. <laughs> you never hear something before. You, you, you have not invested. You just felt like because you went to university and you have master's degree that you're ready for life. Life will shock you. You have to read. You have to study. Since some people graduate from school, they never buy one book. After gra they graduate from school, have, this is my certificate, my certificate. No, let you get paper. See my certificate, my certificate, my certificate. Let me let you get my bros. You have to be, make yourself in a such a way you be in demand. When something is in demand, the price is high. Make yourself in a such a way. I knew I was going to be a pastor when I was growing up. I then went, I came into ministry. I have to go and learn the art of communication. How to communicate. How to talk. Without looking at paper. How many times you look at paper? How to be communicating. You're talking. And you're having what they call flow. There are presidents that don't read. They talk. There are ones that have to write speech for them. Well, they're, they're looking like this. All those things you develop the capacity. You know, they just happen. When you see people, they flow. It doesn't just happen. People work on it. I can tell you nights. You are with stone in the mirror between practice. I never see something before. You're working on yourself to get to that climax. That when they say, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome. As you appear, everybody knows it don't come. That's how to build your life. Capacity. Becoming a resource person. Becoming somebody that has something to offer. You cannot say you want to be a public figure with poor communication skill. You never work. You never work. You never work. Poor communication skill. You, you don't go far. Now, some my tongue, they know they work on tongues too. They work on tongues. You work on yourself. There are people that want to come into greatness, but they don't know what to work on themselves. Buy books, they will not read. You recommend something, go and read this. Ah, give me money. Some all they want, give me money. Not the money where you want to, where you need to. Now, knowledge. Knowledge is the real currency. Sorry. Knowledge is the real currency. The real currency is knowledge. Thank you very much. Knowledge is the real currency. If you're going to excel, if you're going to break forth, there has to be knowledge. Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You study. The area where you want to grow, get information in that area, improve in that area, learn. Making money is easy when you know how to make money. And you know how to make money through knowledge. Making money will be easy when you know how to make money. And to make money, you need knowledge to make money. Knowledge is the, the fuel that can lead to the generating of finances. Knowledge. Knowledge. I've spoken in a meeting before. I was sharing with somebody. After I finished speaking in that meeting, what they gave me as a, a long gift, financial gift, was more than somebody's 30 years of gratuity. That's the parting gift for me. That was the parting check. One meeting. Then somebody, they work for 30 years. You don't figure them. When you build your capacity, let me say this to you. Growth is a process. Growth is intentional. Growth is a process. Growth is what? Growth is intentional. Growth is a process. If you won't grow, you go grow. If you don't want to grow, you don't go grow. Growth is a process. Growth is intentional. You decide to grow. You decide to grow. You decide to develop. Young people read. Young people study. Young people buy books. Don't bother about recent shoes. shoes. Every six months, every one year, they change shoes. New designs come. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? But books will be there. Books will be there. Books. I beg, leave books. I beg. Well, I beg, I beg, leave books. They are reading something. You know, some people see somebody reads and say, Ah, you see they read? You, you see they read? <laughs> Which is not by reading, no. It's by reading. I said it's by reading. 
Jesus said it is written because he was reading. Even to defeat Satan, you need to know how to defeat Satan. It's by knowledge. So you invest every month. Salary come, money come. I'm buying two books this month. I'm buying three books I don't have this month with your name on it. You write your name on it. That's why I'm buying this one. I treasure my books and anything. There are books I have in my house that is over 20 years. There are books that senior my children. When they open, they will see the date of the book when I bought it. Information is a currency. That is what I'm teaching tonight that if you, you, if you want to create wealth, if you want to generate wealth, you need ideas. And ideas can be found in books. There is a book they call, is it 360 something ideas? And that, there is one, over 3,000 3, something ideas. It's a book, very voluminous book like this. And all kinds of business ideas are inside that book. All kinds of business ideas. That means if you're reading through that kind of thing, and with the help of the Spirit, you can see something. That will help you make progress. Wealth creation is connected to ideas. Wealth creation is connected to ideas. You have to believe God for ideas. Lord, ideas that can lead to either creation of products or creation of service. Ideas. Somebody said ideas rule the world. And that's true. Many years ago, 25 years ago, where was Facebook? Facebook was a young was a young man who came up that he felt like he wanted to connect a particular community, his community. That, and you know, they can reach out to their friends, they can talk. Before I realized it become a global thing. Become a global somebody's idea. What are you using your brain for? Somebody their brain are only for bad, bad things. Their brain are for witchcraft. How to witch somebody. Somebody buy small 2K2K two two car. Small 2K2K two 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 no, small car. They all they want to say, I, I want killers. I want killers. Yes, that's, that's, that's what they know. That's what they know. They cannot do more than that. Their, their brain is connected to wickedness, not to greatness. Their brain is connected to wickedness, not to greatness. A man whose brain is connected to greatness doesn't enjoy another man. As the man is making progress, you go and give him offering. Hallelujah. Somebody walk into my office this evening and say, oh, Apostle, I can't leave you. I was so in though. He brought that money. was counted. He said, Apostle, this is my first offering. For being your first guest that came in here. Now, mindset, now thinking. It's a mindset. You can have a mindset of wealth. You can have a mindset of prosperity, not a mindset of a beggar. You can have a mindset of abundance. And that is why you got to believe God for ideas. You're praying in tongues. You have written things. And this year, now let me say this to you. Well, some of you, maybe you have not been doing well this year. Why not use this remaining five months to prepare for 2024? And start believing God for ideas. For ideas, for concept, for insight. And let me say this to you. Ideas, the way they start is that they don't come up with the whole picture. They start with a very fragment, you know, very small part of picture that you can begin to work on, work on. Before realize the picture become, come to completion, come to a, a place of perfection. You grow something. Don't be ashamed to start something. Don't be ashamed. One of the richest guys in the world today started by selling a flag. Now what he started with? By selling the flag. Don't tell us why your life is the way it is. Give us reason why your life should be better than where it is. Where it is. Don't people coming to say, you know, things hard for me, things hard for me. It's not an excuse. The way the economy is, this is. Let me say this to you. Nigerian present economy was the same way twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, that people complain. You, I don't live for this country now. Thirty years ago, that people complain. No, I was staying with my parents. You have to say, ah, the way Gary they cost. Guess how much Gary was that time? One basin of Gary was 150 naira. And people were complaining. 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Listen to me. Where were I? I stayed with my parents. I didn't live with somebody. So you cannot say, ah, this pastor said he was living, you know. I stayed with my parents. Gary, one basin of Gary, 25 years ago, 27 years ago. 30 years ago, you see 150. Five gotta come increase, come go to 300. People shout, Jesus. Which can come move to 500. Wow! This government is a bad government. Let them come and meet us now. Let them come and meet us now. Where we are now. <laughs> Let them meet us now. I can tell you, I want to stay with my parents. Oil to one, one bottle of oil you can buy for 10 naira. People 
people were shouting, 10 naira, Jesus, 10 naira. Transport that time, you, you, you use, uh, uh, use like 10 kobo. 10 kobo, you can move from, uh, uh, from uh, Dio to, to Lagos bus stop, 10 kobo. Then he now moved to 50 kobo. Ha! They don't come. They want to kill us. <laughs> That's how it has been. <laughs> That's how it has been. Though. This thing you're seeing like this. There are people that will come there. 20 years from now, they'll say, ah, did you know that the time we bought one person got 4,000? He said, no, it's 40,000 now. God. Wow. By the time we bought full well, 17 era, people were shot. We are going on strike, strike, strike. It's now 590 era. Go strike. <laughs> hey, that was the time. Ah, the fuel is too cost, it's too cost. 100 era. Cash shot down everywhere. Close Ojota. Save Nigeria. Save Nigeria. It's 500. I'm waiting for them. 500. It's moving, no? And if you're not careful, they will hit you 1,000. And as they hit you the 1,000, if you're not careful, you can't begin. The economy. That's system. It's not only in Nigeria. It's in the US. It's in the UK. It's in the US. It's in the UK. It's everywhere. The price of things are rising. When price of things are rising, let your capacity be rising to absorb it. Who am I ministering to today? Let your this is where you now need capacity building for wealth creation. You think certain things will come down? One bank of cement will start building this church. How much? One five, one five, one five, one five, one five. It now moved to two thousand. One day they went for answers and came back four five. And we say, Pastor, let's wait. I said, the cement to come down. I'm not waiting. Be building. Be building. Continue to build because I've learned something about life. Most times when price go up, they don't come down. And instead of coming down, they are going up. So be building at the present price. As it's rising, making the progress. And let me say this to you. Abundance mindset is key to strategic living. Abundance mindset. That no matter what you are facing, no matter what you're dealing with, you need to have abundance mindset. Abundance mindset, the mindset that see possibility, the mindset that see increase. This is why personal development is strategic for advancing your purpose. Personal development, you're advancing personal development, you're growing, you're developing yourself, you're growing, you're making progress. Believe God for ideas, believe God for concepts, believe God for insight. And believe God for a vision. Believe God for ideas. Believe God for concepts. Believe God for insight. And believe God for a vision. Let your vision be bigger than your pockets. Let your vision. Hey, no small dreams here. No small dreams here. Let your vision be bigger than your pocket. Then develop your faith to sustain the vision. I want to say that again. Let your vision be bigger than your pockets. There are many things God told me he would do. Brethren, I'm developing my faith for them. I'm working on my faith for those visions. I'm working on my faith for the vision. The things that God told me he's going to do. I'm believing God for them. Small mind, small life. Great mind, great future. Small. Some of these have somebody with their problem. Ah, if this man just go out on the way now my life is better nobody is the reason why you're where you are and I can tell anybody the reason why they are where they are how they think, what they believe and their conversation how they think, what they believe and their conversation how they think, what they believe and their conversation how they think what they believe and their conversation what is your internal conversation is it a conversation of possibility or a conversation of limitation? What is your internal conversation? What, what goes on inside of you? That when you look at yourself, you, are you telling yourself that there is a possibility, there is a greatness? And can I say this to you? Your conversation will set the motion for your faith operation. Your conversation. Some people look at their life and say, my life don't finish. How can you say your life has finished? Don't let setback stop you from rising. Don't let setback. 
The condition behind your family is not a factor when it comes to the pursuit of your purpose. Your financial status shouldn't be a factor when it comes to the pursuit of your purpose. I was watching a lady today and she was a, a particular bank and I was reading that to my wife that this lady just acquired a bank and said she had a vision of acquiring more five banks. That's a vision. To acquire more five banks and she have mentioned the banks then. I don't want to mention it on broadcast yet. She have acquired one already. She says she's moving. Her target is the next five. And those next five are big banks. And that's her vision. See mindset. See mindset. See thinking. See mindset. I want you to have a dream wall in your house. What I mean by dream wall? It, pictures. Imagination is a currency. Imagination is a force. In, in Genesis 11, God said, what the people have imagined to do, nobody will feast up them. Imagination. How do you think, sir? What is the level of your imagination? How do you think, sir? There are people that their whole life now, born children, train children, then come wait for the children to retrain them in old age. What kind of life is that one now? What kind, of, what kind of life is that one now? Young people, I'm talking to you, all the young people. I'm not talking to the old people right now. They didn't, the old people didn't have a teacher like me talking to them. So I'm just, my born you, I train you, naive my gratuity. Then you find job. I they train you, now you be my, as I, they, as I they pay these school fees, as I they pay these school fees, when I go old, now you go come or come help me. Let me say this to you. You can grow old and have your money if you plan your life well. I didn't tell you truth. There is how you plan your life well. In your old age, you're changing your cars. Akatambelebo shakaba. Can I go plan is over 80 something right now? And he lives in his house. He lives in his house. How many planes when don't change? It's not old age that is a problem. It was a mindset you formed that was not lined up with God's word that has become a resistance to the flow of the supply of the spirit. That is a mindset. And this is my son, why they train? Not even, even my whole future. Not, not even my life. Oh, not even my life. Nobody's your life. Your life is with you. Your life is with you. Nobody's your life. Your life is with you. My father used to pray one prayer for me. Yes, I like the prayer. He used to pray that what I've done for him, my children will do for him. Yes, it's a good prayer, but that's not my focus. That's not my focus. My focus is that I should be able to buy myself a car. When I get to 70, I don't know they drive car this way. Now, when I can't get something, I know a drive car. When they do me now? The person I went for his birthday function is 70. And he used to drive himself. My wife used to talk about him. I said, guy, this one, take him fire. But when they drive him, 17, they drive himself. All the children are doing well in life. But he drives himself. He'll come meet me. He used to come here and visit me here. One time he has come to visit me here. Daniel was here. Turned up where uh, Apostle Alpha and I, I said, I did find sir. And you see me, he just like, oh my soul, God. <laughs> you don't, you, 70 years old. But there is a vision. And he has invited us for his 50 years uh, marriage anniversary that is coming up in five years and say, we're going to come. I said, yes, sir, we're coming. Vision, vision. Vision is the key to longevity. No vision, no longevity. Have a vision. What is your vision? Are they sick? Are they sick? If you get vision, those money go wrong. Those few away they get for night, they go wrong. Because vision is energy. I know that they won't keep me from village. They won't keep me in my village. When they leave me, oh, when they leave me, I know they don't do anything. No. See, come on. Let me catch you. If I catch you, say, catch a vision this night. <laughs> catch a vision. Get a vision. A vision far beyond Morokiri. United States of Morokiri. Catch a vision. Look at somebody else and say, catch a vision. Catch a vision. Catch a vision. Have a vision. Something that wakes you up. Something that makes you want to pray. Something that makes you want to write. Something that makes you want to read. Something that makes you want to think. Something that makes you wake up and pursue. What is your vision 50 years from now? What is your vision 10 years from now? See, are you just living 
or you're living to make a difference what is your vision can i ask you this question to what extent are you willing to go god look at joshua and said you're old and sickening in age but there are more lands to conquer but look at your body joshua right now catch a vision catch a vision catch a vision everybody here get an idea an idea what do you want to do with your life this government eh? this government this government eh? this government this government, eh? they there they talk this government. They there, just they there. <laughs> they there. <laughs> this government, eh? this government, this government, eh? this. <laughs> and what they were, now this government, the uh, government, the <laughs> government. How many they there with government? <laughs> Catch a vision. Catch a vision and become a global player. No vision, no influence. No vision, no space. No vision, no strategy. No vision, no future. Catch a vision. Catch a vision. Your mother's generation may have not catch vision because they never heard somebody like me talk to them. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? But all the young people here from the age of 50, from the age of 55, 60 downward, and you're hearing me catch a vision. God came to Abraham at the age of 75 and said, come out from your father's house to a land I will show you. At 75, God was forecasting a vision of a nation for a man. Wealth comes through vision. Resources comes through vision. What is your vision? Or oh, you're just in there. Ah, if my mother was alive now, hey, I will know where I would by now. If my father was alive now, what about when they're there with them with their life and they make progress? You know they see well. Are you not seeing people that are with their parents? Their father is alive, their mother is alive, and they are useless. It's not who is alive, it's whether you that is talking is alive. Kai. Catch a vision. I say catch a vision. Somebody shout, catch a vision. Who am I talking about? I say shout it, catch a vision. One more time, shout it again, catch a vision. That excuse, if my father was here, if my mother was here, there are people, me, I don't get my father. My father and my mother, they're alive. <laughs> I'm paying their bills. It's not about mother and father being alive. It's about vision. Because your parents may be alive, they can't do much for you. But if you catch a vision, you can do much for yourself. If somebody here, I don't know what I'm saying right now. If my uncle was there, chain! Your uncle can be there and you're crippled in finances. If I'm able to travel and go to America, I hear saying they pick dollar for road for America. They dream. They dream, oh. <laughs> they dream. And who they tell it as? Cocoa story. <laughs> they dream. You go soon wake up at Eddie Mansa. <laughs> they dream. Wake up. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Which money do the people around? <laughs> Which money? <laughs> you are taxed for everything. My pastor asked me a question one day. What did you say, Apostle? People that are in debt supporting you. How? He said, What? People that are in debt supporting your ministry. What, what are you saying? This must be a miracle. I said, Yes, it's a miracle. Catch a vision. Vision makes you roll your sleeve. Huh? Huh? Vision makes you. Huh? You lose your shirt. You do like this. Eh? Come on. Any day you're ready, go come out. You're never ready. When you are ready, vision make you roll your sleeve and then you go to work. Vision. But when you don't get vision, you not believe everybody a problem. Nobody wants to help me. When I see some young men, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years, they complain. If they scatter my head, they, I'm going to look them. I said, what are you talking about? At this age, you are gay. Uh, you, know, you know what? Get out and go and look for something to do with yourself. Catch a your vision for your life. Life is not about excuses. It's about purpose. Life is about productivity. Life is about influence. Life is about impact. Life is about growth. Life is not about, not about the excuses. I don't have anybody to help me. Then help yourself. Then begin to imagine an idea. Imagine a vision. What can I do? 
A pastor told me one day, one day that a man came to him was complaining that things are very hard and tough. He said, get a job that will put the food on the table first. The man said, I'm looking for the job according to my, my degree. He said, now nah, you need a job that put food on the table, not a job according to your degree. Now, a job that put food on the table is more important than a job according to your degree. There are different stages of life. Sometimes you need to roll your sleeve and do all kinds of mini job. Carry block for your head if you watch it. Carry cement if you watch it. Walk your vision. All these claiming big boys and wearing big trousers, walking up and down on the street doesn't make sense. Catch a vision. Catch a vision. All this working second, second, looking for a man that will pay your bill. Get out from that lifestyle. Catch a vision. He said, told the man, go and do something that will put food on the table. That is your vision. Not, I'm looking for a job according, you know somebody was bombarding me with the text. And I said, what is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? Catch a vision. Imagine I didn't catch a vision. Those who live with me, who have sent me, they know that the time I used to walk, walk till 1 a.m., 12 a.m., I am walking. Was you know somebody that was telling me on Mondays? Well, yesterday, then I was going to say, sir, you don't walk. Oh. Pastor, you don't really walk. Oh. I know, sir, I don't walk. I don't walk for over 27 years that I've never taken a vacation for two weeks. So every year, sir, I go vacation for three months. No talk. Oh. Just shut up your mouth. Just, if I hear pin. You go don't collect something. No, open your mouth. If you hear one day come church, they say, Pastor is on vacation. No, just be coming. Don't shh. If I hear anything, 27 years I've not moved out. You, for 27 years, they work, they never they never say me go leave. Why my own will be your problem? Catch a vision. When you catch a vision, you don't give excuse of your life. There are people here that are saying, God, do big things in my life. God said, I'll finish it in the finished work. Then catch a vision and lay hold with your faith on the finished work. Catch a vision. Vision makes you stretch. Vision makes you write. Vision makes you draw. Vision makes you make contact. Vision makes you open conversation with people. Vision makes you create a Facebook page that will become not just a sharp picture, but to share your vision. To share your vision. Catch a vision. Somebody here tonight, catch a vision. Wake up to the reality that prosperity is connected to vision. Prosperity is what? Is connected to what? To vision. What is prosperity connected to? Connected to? It's connected to vision. Vision leads to prosperity. Vision leads to prosperity. Let me share one story with you. To, to bless you. Even a story. It's a real life story. Many years ago when God called me to do this ministry work, so there was a very prominent woman in this city and she stood there, very prominent and used to be in government. So, and she's a Christian. I went and wrote, went to where they sell equipment and priced all the equipment. Listen to this story very well. It will bless your heart. I priced keyboard. I priced drum. This thing was happening 26 years ago. I priced keyboard, I priced drum, I priced everything I wanted for ministry. I wrote it down. I went to the woman's office and said, man, this is what I'm, I'm believing God for. I want you to help us. You know what the woman did? Let's pray. Let's pray was the last time we said, let's pray. Five naira, you know, give me. Let's pray. And I like the way she handled me. Because that's what make me come get sense. You need to hear me well though. You did for this place this night. That thing come make me, I can't do that, I can't get sense. I can't understand, say, it's not by writing this and presenting to people. It's by using my faith on my own list. It's by using my own faith to trust God, not to be mad with people. You know, I went to that woman's office, I read everything, she never helped me. It's for the gospel, why couldn't she help me? It's for the gospel, but use your faith for your own assignments. Use your faith for your ministry. If God call you, let your faith fuel the vision. Stop fighting people for not supporting you. It's not their responsibility to support if they don't want to support. But catch a vision and the right helpers will locate you. If you're doing it right, God will send you mercy, grace, and help. Catch a vision. There are people getting mad at their friends. You know, help me. My rent was due. You know, help me. I did for you. What did they invest for them for? Now, them call you. Now, them 
burn you. Let them burn you. Let them call you. What is the verse for them for? But when you catch a vision, you open door for the flow of the spirit. Catch a vision. Vision bringing help us. Help us. People that will come from nowhere, they will jump up here saying, hey, hey, listen. God just sent me to help you with this. Alpha. What are you doing right now? I said, this is what I'm pursuing. It's okay. We're going to do it together. How much do you have? I have just 1,000 pounds. Okay, I'll do 10,000. Catch a vision. When there is a vision, there is a provision. No vision, no direction. Catch a vision. Wealth is found in vision. Wealth is found in vision. A lot of people have no vision. They are just existing with that direction. No vision. Nothing. Well, well, yeah, nothing. No vision. See some young men. No vision. No direction. How do you know a person with a vision? They have the mark of stability. Stability, concentration, focus are the, the key factors that is connected to the lifestyle of a visionary. They have focus. They have stability. They know what they are looking for. A visionary is not confused. A visionary has a direction. Catch a vision. Life is not about excuses. Life is about purpose. I left my father's house when I was 25. Before I was 25, I left my father's house. Before I was 25 years, I left my father. I was living in Bonnie Street. 153 Bonnie Street. Most of my elder brothers were still living with my father when I packed my things and said, I'm going. My father looked at me and said, you are too young. Where did you get money? We are too young to live. As I'm living, don't watch me. I they go. Before then, I have stopped eating my mother's food. It's on purpose. She will bring food. I said, "What? Have you have eaten?" I said, "Yes, mama, I've eaten." Because I don't want to keep eating my mother's food. And when I move, I will remember food and run come back. I don't want to come back. As at the end this time, at the end of the only thing I owe you, my man, is to bring money for you. But say to run back to you, mba, it don't end. And since that day, Pastor Esther, till today, I've not tasted my mother's food. Yes, I can tell you. I cut the time because if I continue to be fed, anybody where they always they, they cry, they put for your mouth, they cry, they put for your mouth, they, they do you good. Because when they stop, eh, madness will catch you. I tell you to do your faith. Sometimes you need someone to go push you. Where well, goes your illustration now? Marcus, come, I love you. You're, the, you're my son. Come, come. Let me show you something. Marcus, come up. I want to show you something. Daniel, come. Come, come. Come, 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 come fast. I want to show you what some of you need in this season. Somebody will go push. Uh, what are they push? Just they go. Come this side. Come this side. Come this side. Come this side. See, you don't need somebody that will. Papa Dosa said. God has pepper led you. God has chickened you. Now he wants to ego you. Now, you need somebody that will do it like this. Push you. Push you without thinking. Just like this. Push you. That's what you need. You don't need to hey, I did that. Hey, now you be the one. You don't know, bro. You grow by push. If you are out of your comfort zone, you're on your way to greatness. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Thank you. Thank you. If you're out of your comfort zone, you're on your way to your greatness. A preacher lost his accommodation and went to his father's house. Who was that? Eh? Just two planties. He arrived with his wife, thinking that his father would be, ha, ah, my son, you lost accommodation. His father told him, only for this night, tomorrow you are out of this place. Kai. This night, only this night, because I love your wife, only this night. Tomorrow, he started believing God. God moved now. <laughs> God moved. <laughs> Have a vision. I can tell you what happened when you push out of your comfort zone. All these people, where they sing song for your ear. See, they're killing you. I they tell you, they kill you. They need a push. Some people are not responsible because nobody pushed them. You come out to have somebody buy bread. They buy this one. If they kick all like a uh, uh, guinea pig, they, they carry your body. You never see something. <laughs> hey, ha! I prophesy that your vision move you to your destiny. Catch your vision. You see a man of 55 years, 45 years, they invest for a mother say, my meat no big. I go slap you. Come collect one slap. Look her. My salute you will slap. My salute you will slap. Catch your vision. Catch a vision. Catch a vision. Vision.
affliction will make you. I lie down on top of banner. I was glad. Oh, for banner. What did they do now? Vision. Don't tell me that's a vision. I want to grow my made they grow. When you have a child, and after three years they are still carrying the baby, I say, wise parents, you have consigned. You will have consigned. You go get consigned. Go get consigned. Waiting. Get up and face your life. Catch a vision. And those who catch vision will leave their comfort zone to manifest their vision. If you're always looking for somebody to pet you, somebody to, hey, you don't love me. No! Sometimes love is a push. Who hear me today? <laughs> I said, sometimes love is a what? A push. Go there, go there, go there, go there. A man was claiming that his son can swim. So he came to his grandfather, telling the boy's grandfather, at this my son can swim very well. The man told him, the way I look at your son, your son cannot swim very well. He said, he can swim, he can swim very well. You know what the man did? The grandfather did. The grandfather pushed the boy inside swimming pool. Push the boy. And the boy started drowning. He called his mother and said, if I were you, I would jump inside the swimming pool to go and save my son. I thought the boy cannot swim. He pushed him to prove to him that your boy is not as what you think. Your comfort zone is not your destiny. Break it. Have a vision. Stop waiting for hand out from people. Catch a vision. Get a vision. Get it. Stop getting offended when somebody said, move forward. Stop getting offended when somebody look at you face to face. There are people that made me come what I am to do because they talked to me the way I didn't like. And I thank God they talked to me. Because if they have not spoken to me that way, I just say, hey, well, they don't love me. But that thing wake me up. I know said they are not. Nobody wants to see nonsense around me. Catch a vision. Wake up to greatness. Stop getting offended and frustrated because somebody refused to show help or love or mercy. Catch a vision. Vision makes you grow. Vision makes you responsible. Vision makes you excel. Vision makes you rise. Vision makes you, you want to dream more. You want to read more. You want to work on yourself. Vision makes you wake up. Catch a vision. The key to longevity is vision. No vision, no life. Watch people without vision. No vision, no life. I'm my mother's last one. But now I look like the first one. Nothing will happen in that family without them calling me. Go do meeting without me now. You're on your own. Do anything now. They, they talk to you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to say anything. No. no invite me. You're on your own now. Try doing something without calling me first. You will know who will be the, the son for this place. God, try. Just hold a meeting. Just gather yourselves. You can become a force. Wherever you find your because there is a vision. I have a vision. That's one meeting some people call me by say that meeting will not hold. And that's how I ended. Catch it. When you have vision, you have influence. Influence is a vision. This night I came to wake you up. I came to wake up your greatness. There are some of you here. You're carrying billions. You're carrying greatness. But without vision, there will be no expression. Sometimes vision will lead to will lead to isolation hey there is isolation in a vision the purpose of the isolation is to make room for preparation all the people that are supposed to give you platform they deny you it means they are telling you build your brand build your own brand build your own brand when they don't give you a platform keep developing your capacity rejection should be a direction rejection should not be a resistance rejection should be a direction rejection should be a resource they don't like me they don't like me you not like me i'm not saying no like me. come on get out of that mentality of like i will not like you catch a vision for your life and give your life a value the value of your life is found in vision no vision no value no excuse don't come with any excuse yeah no excuse uh, no excuse. I said no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. No excuse. I must catch a vision. No excuse. I must do something with my life. I must pursue a vision. No excuse. No excuse. But I won't tell them. My friend was, you know, one of my great friends was saying something. He said, if then they no get too much, we will not get at all at all. When we're growing up. And he was telling me that anytime I come and tell him the visions I'm pursuing in life, he'll be wondering that him that came from a well-groomed family. You know what it means for your father to own a major property in Portacot? Your father. 
in those days in the 70s and 70s and 80s then your father was a, a major politician this is my friend's father was a, an influential politician so he said anytime i come and tell him what i want to do he will look at my background and then watch what i was saying and one of the days i came and i spoke to him and he went in and said god help this my friend this guy is losing it but one day he looked at me and said thank god for that kind of faith you got any it's better I dream it and I don't get it than I never dreamed it. It's better. Come on! It's better. They said if you follow the general, if you don't enter as a general, you'll be a colonel. If you follow the generals, even if you don't become a general, you go become a colonel. But don't follow uh, to one rank. Anybody for military, yeah? Cause something. No Kolokorofo is not a right name. Of some people, there is a name they call them. <laughs> Whatever they call them, I'm not a military person, but I want to tell you something. Follow a general. That paraventure, you didn't make it to the position of a general. You'll be a colonel. You'll be a major. You'll be something. You will, you will have something. Catch a vision. Life is beautiful with vision. I want everybody here to catch a vision for the next 50 years. What do you want to do 50 years from now? Pastor, unless I don't uh, the pastor, I, 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 I don't even say I see you now. Eh? Maybe now I can't say you have vision. Eh? It's my pastor, they preach. Mommy, catch a vision. Daddy, catch a vision. Auntie, catch a vision. <laughs> Wherever you are, catch a vision. Vision renews life. Hey, one of the things that make your skin renew, maybe medical, eh? now vision. There is a life that vision introduces in people's life. Vision. When you get vision, you go change your company. All those people where they follow, where they get direction. Where they call you up and down, where they get direction of life. You go just cut those rubbish, foolish relationships. Well, some of you are relating with people that have no direction, no vision. Now, my friend, now who be your friend? Friendship should be a resources for vision. If it's your friend, they must be adding to you. They should be saying something that stretch you mentally, that stretch you emotionally, that stretch you financially, that help you achieve your vision. Catch a vision. And define the class of people you want in your circle of influence. Catch a vision. Don't keep company with Momo people. No keep company with idiots. Don't keep company with people without direction. When you catch a vision, it will define your association. Why is that girl your friend? Why is that man your friend? Why is that lady your friend? What does she bring to the table? When you go to Facebook, they talk rubbish. You want somebody who will inspire you. What kind of book have you read? What kind of books are you reading? What are the kind of information are you exposed to? People that will help you grow mentally. People that will help you become more stable emotionally. People that will help you grow spiritually. People that will help you see possibility. Great relationship is built on the premise of vision and the release of potential. Great relationship. Don't keep company with Joneses. Don't keep company with people that have no direction. Don't keep company with people without a vision. People without a vision will envy your vision. People with a vision will support your vision. Catch a vision for your life. Stop keeping coming up that have no direction. Now my friend, which friend? Which friend? What is he contributing to your life? What is the friend adding? Contributing is no money. But somebody can be saying something that will help you rise in life. A dear friend of mine said something to me last few months ago. He said, Apostle, if I have not met you, I don't know what my, where my life will be right now. Because meeting you, you taught me faith. I was able to overcome. This person has five children. Four already in university. Four already in university. Two are graduating this year. Two are graduating this year. When you have a vision, you need a synergy for the release of your potential. Vision is the currency of the future. Catch a vision. Stop hanging out with dead people. Stop making dead people your friends. Stop joining club that have no vision. Club will just carry out the club. It you insult each other. After insulting each other, you leave. Don't catch a vision. Catch a vision. Catch a vision. 
Catch a vision. Let there be something productive. Catch a vision. Meaningful relationship. Meaningful networks. Meaningful. Somebody was calling me today. Very close family. Man. Call, call. I said, send text. I'm not in the mood to talk to anybody. Send text. That just it. Send text. Send text. Because there are conversations that is toxic. There are conversations. After I finish that conversation, a quarter will end with. So convers- when, when you see those kind of call coming, eh? what you do, send a text. And said, only text. Save your energy for things that promote your vision. Be wise, though. Be wise. Your real family are people that support your vision. If you want to talk about family, your blood, now people will support your vision. Blood, not be your brother, not be your sister. That one, a different kind of blood. That one, a biology. You didn't hear me well. Biology is different from revelation. Any conversation with a toxic nature, just reply, send text. Send what? Send text. And that text will solve the problem. You send text, you reply them by text. Because once you begin to talk, the argument begins, there will be a fight. You may say something you're not supposed to say because there is no vision. What vision does, vision will stretch you. Vision will make you begin to see possibility. Vision makes you, vision makes you become selective. You select your company. You select who you're going to work with. Somebody say, Pastor, how does all these things relate with riches? I can tell you that influence determines wealth. Influence. The right influence. The right association. The right people in your life. It's a well of resources, influence. What kind of relationship around you? What kind of people do you relate with? Who are your friends? Who can you call your real friend? What is the exchange value? What do they bring to the table? What is the degree of their influence, their impact? What do they add to your life? Relationship should be a resources for advancing vision. Relationship should not be something that splits your energy. I gave you the, the false symbols of relationship. Remember one of the services we had? How many of you remember? The false symbols of relationship. How many of you remember? Anybody? Remember? Only one person. I said there are people who divide you. Division. There are people who subtract from you. When they come into your life, what they do is subtraction. Subtraction is called minus. Oh, minus. <laughs> there are people who are minus. Oh, minus. Minus. Minus relationship. I don't need minus around me. I've got a vision. I told somebody when you're above 40, you need strategic relationship. Huh? If I'm in my 20s, I can play with anybody. If I'm in my 10s, I can play with anybody. But in my 40s, man, I need people that can help me achieve my goals. Don't tell me stories. Stay your own way. There are relationships that are minus. Subtraction. Subtraction. There are relationships that are division. They divide you. It's a relationship. But anytime I meet in a quarrel, one fight or the other, everything I meet, one argument, you'll be telling them your testament of how God is helping you. They're not introduce somebody. And I said, the right person is serving day. Oh, now they hear me. Oh, now they hear me. You're telling them how God is helping you. He said, hey, yeah, oh, no, be the real one now. That one, you're buying fiber. You get the one who come from Dubai. You forget, say, my brother's for a ban. I they supply most things for Dubai. Get sense, though. Versace, where they do and for a bar, will go export them to that Dubai for you. You go buy and they'll come back to Port Harcourt. So they wait for you. Who go do and for near, we send them to US, to UK. And you go buy and come there. I bought it in America. Yes, we're looking at you. Since you don't believe in us, we can tell you we have value. Get sense. Look at somebody say common sense. So there are people who subtract from you. There are people who divide you. Those two people, I don't want them in my life. Either by proximity, by mistake, by chance, by anything. I bind them. The people I want are those who add to me. Addition. Addition. There are people that they are, they are, them being around you is a problem. There is an addition relationship. And the last set is the one I like so much. The multiplier sky. The multiplication. May just one multiplier. Just one person that can multiply. You will see how your life will accelerate. I beg you, stay away from subtraction. 
I beg you, stay away from division. Or if you can walk, stay away from division. Stay away from subtraction. Anybody that can divide you, anybody that can subtract from you, I beg you, stay away from them. They, they suck energy. They suck energy with their attitude. They suck energy with their disposition. They suck energy with their lifestyle. I don't want them around it. I don't want drama. Hallelujah. I want those that can multiply me. Those that can add to me. Because you need those that can add to you to fulfill your destiny. Am I ministering to somebody here tonight? I want somebody that can add to me. Pastor, what can we do to achieve this goal? Pastor, how can we move this area of ministry forward? Pastor, how do we support this? Pastor, what can I do? Pastor, which area am I going to help? I want people that can help me. I don't want liability. Ma, talking about liability. I don't want liability. I don't want people that will be in liability. No, 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 no. I don't want liability members. I want members that can add to me. I'm tired of liability. I give up on liability. I want asset. Asset is somebody that can contribute. It's not only financial. You can come to church, see a place, you start cleaning it up. You can come to church, you wash the toilet. You can come to church, you walk up and see the place, you clean up. You can come to church, say, which area? I need to support this area. I don't want liability, I want assets. I want people that can add to my life. At a particular age of your life, it's not story, story you need. You need meaningful relationship. You don't have time for games. You have time for direction. You have time for vision. You don't play with your life. You need direction. You need to be proactive with your life, proactive with your time, proactive with your resources. You need to become more effective with what you're called to do. You don't need to waste your life anymore. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight, but you need to begin to understand that every relationship is not leading you to your destiny. So you tell them, well, Pastor C used to say something, they has a razor blade. That anything that, any relationship that is not like, you just got it. There are people that have been in your life is more of a burden. They only ask from you. They only ask. There are family members that Anytime they call you now, my rent, my children's school fees, my this, they never put something in the envelope and say, ah, since you're my brother, we don't relate to I just come with, uh, I just say the built church. Now 500, now nine days are here. Use and buy water for people. I don't know what they can say. There is somebody I know. The person is so wealthy so wealthy I will take money send to him I will buy shoes send to him I will buy ties it's wealthy this person have oil company it's wealthy I will descend and those things and one day I told myself I want to reap this kind of person as a member because the person has been in a church for more than 30 years and he's still serving from nothing to the top today. So I want to read that kind of member. Vision. How can I go and begin to ask? Vision. Catch a vision. Somebody here tonight, catch a vision. I want you to leave this service with a Holy Ghost provocation. Don't mind that word. Eh? What I mean by it, you're provoking the spirit to go and dream, to catch a vision, to do something. I don't need subtraction. Everybody rise up and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up. And say, no subtraction say it one more time no subtraction around my life no division around my life I receive multiplication I receive addition I prophesy in the name of Jesus meaningful relationship relationship with value relationship with purpose relationship that is strategic relationship that it builds i receive father bring to me men and women with a vision with a direction lord help me in this season of my life i connect with the right relationship no division no subtraction only addition and multiplication i pray for you tonight that the grace of wealth and prosperity will come upon you you will prosper on every side i decree and i declare that you will have visions you will see vision
break out from your comfort zone tonight break out from your comfort zone tonight move into a new adventure in the name of Jesus receive the bold receive the boldness to see possibility may the language of faith be found upon you see greatness see greatness speak greatness talk greatness move in greatness believe in your possibilities believe in your strength believe in who you are I prophesy to you tonight that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be upon you to endorse success to endorse greatness to endorse a new vision when you go home tonight let ministry spirits come to you so remember you need to catch a vision remember you need to write down a vision remember you need to work on something receive help for your weakness receive help for your strength receive help for the things God has called you to do I pray for the boldness to step into greatness I decree tonight that you will be awakened to the reality of your future in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that you will see you will hear you will know thank you Father in Jesus name Amen